Hello everyone and welcome to Simproved, Fry speaking here and welcome back to another Sims 4 speed build. Today I have a very very special house for you. It is the Bennett house from Pride and Prejudice. To be more specific it's the version of this house from the movie from 2005. And I was inspired to do this because, yeah, I have been on a big hiatus. The last expansion pack is the Cottage Living Pack, which came with the world called Henford on Bagley. And it's like this English cottage countryside. And I decided it would be perfect to replay the Pride and Prejudice, you know, movie or like just the story in general, because it's, you know, based on a book, of course. So for those who have absolutely no clue what this is all about, it is a very famous story by Jane Austen and it got you know different movies and TV series and whatnot like there are d several outputs how the story got remade and got some revamps and whatnot like with zombies even and whatnot and I decided it would be really really cool to yeah just build this and do it as perfect as possible like as the original house that we see in the movie i chose this movie version because amongst pride and prejudice fans apparently the bbc version from 1995 is like the more you know like the fan favorite and i've watched it as well i'm german i've never seen the bbc version um <laughs> maybe it was in the I don't know TV sometime but yeah I, I only knew actually when I wanted to build this this version of the house and I chose this actually because it is a little bit more run down it is they definitely look poorer the Bennets in this movie version and I thought this goes very well along with the cottage living objects that we got because you know there are like farm animals we can see that they apparently have cattle and some chickens in the movie and uh, yeah I just wanted to implement that here as well it has a very sexy moat all around it and with the cottage living expansion pack came also the update that gave us ponds and I thought oh cool then I can use the pond tool as well and kind of you know try that out in hindsight I thought okay the moat could have been done with a pool as well but uh, yeah um, I just thought I had to use that tool you know because it was just so new back in the days <laughs> because it's, I'm kind of late I started to build this actually when cottage living came out and then I went on a big hiatus you can see me doing the mode and uh, yeah it is it took me about 60 hours to build over the course of the last six months I guess um, and uh, yeah so it is very very detailed I tried to recreate the house frame by frame and I think I've watched that movie about like 30 or 40 times around those lines, I guess. In my opinion, the house has my favorite set design. It's very uh, iconic. It's a very cool house just in general by the, by the layout. And since this is like an original house that really exists, it's, the, it's called Groombridge Place. It's in Kent. And there is also like a cool little behind the scenes snippet, I would say, how they uh, try to decorate this for the movie. And uh, I found some more stuff about the house online. You can also visit it. It's actually open for visitors and it has like a huge garden and whatnot. So um, yeah, if you're interested, I will just put the link to their website to this house in the video description down below if you are interested. <laughs> and yeah it's just it fits more into cottage living and i liked how run down it kind of looks like they definitely made the bandits look a little bit poorer in this version of the movie they changed apparently quite a lot there from the original story keep in mind that i haven't read the original story ever i'm sorry i only knew the two you know the 95 version the zombie version and the 2005 version <laughs> of this whole story and I just fell in love with the production design of this. So yeah, basically what I did is, uh, as you could already see, I just went frame by frame. First of all, I 
tried a little bit to figure out what kind of you know vibe if it's possible to build so there was like a little version of this on the side you know what kind of wallpaper etc etc that's al always what I do in, in the beginning because I have to make sure that in the end I don't run into any issues with swatches or objects missing because as always in all of my builds this is absolutely CC free I used all the packs that I own which is basically all of them so I can't really say if you know this is this is definitely not just base game but it is possible to build this without CC if you have, you know, the time and patience like I do and the perfectionism and have all the packs, so then it's possible. <laughs> I really, really hope that you like it. It's definitely possible to play the, you know, things happening in the story in this house. You could theoretically, you know, play Pride and Prejudice in this house. Of course, you would need, you know, the Darcy house family and whatnot, but it is theoretically possible. And I think Hanford and Bagley is the perfect world for this. So that was also like a cool idea to, you know, have some, you know, TV reference or like, because I like to do this. Like I love to bring some other franchises into the game by building it, because I think that's something that is, you know, just brings, it sparks joy for me if I made the best version possible to bring it into The Sims. And I think it looks very, 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 like it's a very good Sims 4 version of this house. I will and did take some freedoms here and there because I wanted it to be playable. So some things are definitely more Sims than realistically from this time period or the swatches are different or you know I just chose some different colors because I'm just bound to the color swatches we have in the game so for example for the exterior it's definitely more green there are definitely more animals around I think I even put like an alligator somewhere because I just thought oh there's an alligator let's put an alligator there so um, yeah these are like just the silly kind of snippets that I put in there that maybe make of course no sense you know it's like not super historically accurate but it is like accurate in like sims kind of logic terms so and I also wanted it to have as much of gameplay as possible so there will be planters there will be like beekeeping there will be gardens there will be the cows there will be the chickens <laughs> Uh, and like rabbits and birds and whatnot and so I placed well like flower arranging everything that is kind of like a gameplay skill object maybe that doesn't make sense that they have it but I just wanted to put that in there because I wanted to give you guys the freedom to play you know as as much as you want to or like as much as you like it to because I thought maybe you don't want to just play Elizabeth Bennett you know <laughs> maybe you want to put yourself or your sim uh, inside this house and like kind of play around um, and also I just thought it would be kind of funny because while I was building this I was thinking yeah maybe we put you know some servants quarters it's not just stables we put like some um, yeah servants quarters uh, next to the stables so theoretically you could do like rex to riches kind of a thing living there as a servant maybe and then I don't know marrying the master of the house or something I don't know um I just thought it gives you a little bit more options than just you know have a nice look at the house it's really you know playable you can really do lots of sim stuff in there and I just thought yeah that's like a cool kind of cute idea to implement this house it's definitely a little bit more playable than for example the bath house from um spirited away that I did for the snowy escape yeah that's the word <laughs> snowy escape expansion pack and I just thought this this is like perfect the, these family houses are definitely something that is a little bit more playable in the sims even though I personally kind of think they're boring but if it's like a recreation from a movie or like tv series or anything in pop culture I guess um, that I personally also enjoy then yeah fair game I like that <laughs> so basically I have to admit though that I'm not like the biggest fan of the Pride and Prejudice story I'm not that much personally into these old romantic you know stories so 
this is also why I based this, I chose this house maybe because I personally just went by okay, which one looks possible in The Sims, more possible to do in The Sims 4, which one is a little bit more interesting for you know production design wise, set design wise. So I chose this house, and uh, so apologies go out to every you know Pride and Prejudice fan that likes the I don't know 95 version more or whatever, or maybe I did of. of course also lots and lots of things that are super weird and like don't make any sense story-wise here but yeah so for example things that I added that are definitely not in the original story or house probably is bathrooms because in The Sims 4 we don't have like chamber pots or something like that and I want it to be playable I want your Sims to you know have green bars everywhere so there are three bathrooms one in the stables for the servants and then two bathrooms upstairs and once I went into the interior design I just went frame by frame this is why I watched this movie like a lot and I have to say again like I did with all the other things where I do this with the movies because I tried to make it as perfect as possible I hate it now <laughs> because I've watched it so many times and if I hear these piano pieces again <laughs> i'm gonna barf or something but um yeah it is it is a cool movie just watch it if you're interested or maybe don't but this house is definitely really cool in the sims 4 and once i was finished with it i was super super happy so for the interior design i tried a lot like i moved around a lot I had to resize lots of the pictures so that the frames of the pictures match or like the picture portraits itself match we have of course some color choices that i did that you know maybe don't you know exactly how the swatch is but if you see it that way there's always like if there's a picture frame somewhere in some little frame of the movie and i see it hanging somewhere i definitely put it on the right wall and it took me, of course, in the beginning, lots and lots of um, time to figure out where's the door, where, like from which angle did they film this in the original house or on the original set. But yeah, I think this is like the most accurate depiction of it. So the frames are like the picture frames are all right. The, you know, sometimes I have vases, vases somewhere, all that kind of stuff. So the freedoms that I took is there are curtains everywhere because I personally like the curtains. And apparently in the movie version they don't have any curtains i think this has to do with the fact that while filming they did a whole new paneling inside around so every room is actually six inches smaller <laughs> to put like other wallpaper on and stuff and so they didn't have they had like sexy wind sunken in window sills and all that stuff which i had to do here with some surfaces or like little um boards that i just put under the windows for example and also i took some freedoms with of course the wallpaper because we don't have that many wallpapers that fit the style but yeah i really really liked you know trying out all these things what really helped me while building this was definitely the better build by mod by twisted maxi this will not affect your download it will still be cc free it just helps me as a builder to you know size down things more accurately sometimes i can also change the color of the lights in build mode and don't have to go back to live mode st stuff like that it's also sorting and the filters of the objects for example so all these kinds of stuff just help me while building but they don't affect it and you know the the thing is not like tagged as cc or something it's just easier for me to you know wiggle around in the build mode i guess but it helped me a lot to size stuff for example because lots of the sizes don't match up um and i also took some freedoms sometimes there are like objects you know they move objects like they have apparently like a set of i i counted they have like three different armchairs on set and they have five different chairs so and they just move them around from scene to scene because through the movie it's like you know a year or two i don't know, even know how long but definitely we see some seasons coming and going 
and they moved you know some chairs and some knickknacks in the background definitely from one place to the other it's the same prop <laughs> and i was like is that that chair is it that chair so uh, you know kind of like these little knickknacks i try to recreate as best as possible but sometimes of course that's why the clutter in the background of the movie it changes so there's not always the, this chair on this side and stuff like that which makes sense it's like a little bit more me lived in but it also gave me lots and lots of freedom to how to arrange stuff the office of the father is also something that we only see like from one angle so i had a little bit more freedom from the other side for example but it's stuffed with lots and lots of papers and knickknacks that he collects and he's apparently really fond of an orchid because he's carrying that orchid like three or four times around so he has an orchid here on his table that's like my little nod to that guy <laughs> i don't know who's who, who was like thinking that's a cool idea let's sit, let, let him carry an orchid around all the time in the movie makes him look busy <laughs> but yeah he's apparently into you know botanical stuff i don't know but yeah basically it's it's, it's a fun thing. I really like the era and it's definitely possible if you, you know, now have all the expansion packs. They have been on sale throughout the, you know, I think Sims 4 is like $10 now or like at least it was. There was on sale and like lots and lots of the expansion packs were always on sale now. So I think it's like possible that for people who are super into builds and whatnot and like getting all the all the all of my builds basically you know there is always some some time where they are bundles and whatnot so you can actually they are a steal if they're like not super new by the way what i also changed there apparently seems to be sometimes rugs where i think rugs are not as necessary because they cover up a little bit too much and sometimes i added rugs so that's also not as accurate <laughs> And these are like things that bother me myself but i think like for you playing with it you know it doesn't bother you maybe i also put in lots more clutter than it actually is in the movie because i wanted it to look you know look a little bit more lift in i guess and in my opinion in the end if you don't have certain packs for certain objects and they kind of just watches are wonky or whatever and you don't like it i always think it's easier for you to delete stuff than to add stuff because the filtering of the objects in build and buy mode is if you have a lot of packs it's hard to find stuff in my opinion so uh, yeah this is basically why i decide sometimes that it's like a little bit more cluttered and there's like more stuff lying around than maybe it is in the movie but yeah this is just you know my, my whole idea of it the upstairs bedrooms okay we have to talk about that <laughs> so um downstairs is a secret room like like by the layout of the house there has to be a room that we never see in the movie i just put like some cobwebs everywhere and like there's i think a chess table for your sims uh this is like a room you can do whatever you want to and it's the same with the bedrooms we only see the bedrooms from the parents through a window so you actually only see the freaking bed they're in and you only see the bedroom of jane and lizzie and some kind of bedroom room that apparently is from kitty and lydia <laughs> But we don't actually know if it's from kitty and lydia but i personally chose that so yeah so here we are in the bedroom of lizzie and jane they share a bed together in this movie and um i really really like the blue color of the wallpaper like the paneling they had again um so i tried to recreate this here as well and i really like the canopy beds that apparently everyone has here um I, yeah i just thought it's like cute really cute we don't have so many canopy bats so i made them myself with like some spandrels and uh, columns and you know <laughs> some curtains <laughs> that's all uh, it's a little bit more fiddly but uh, yeah it kind of fits a little bit more the vibe of of it and uh, yeah i play tested everything it is definitely possible to sleep everywhere and cook there and live there and like go to the toilet and whatnot so like the basics are all reachable and it's possible i also have to say for if you have the seasons pack if it gets cold there's of course no heating and uh, no uh, um, you know uh, what is it a thermostat or something that you would need maybe uh, but there are you know fireplaces in all uh, all the important rooms so uh, 
This is cool. I also try to make it look as non-electronics as possible. The thing is the sconces and the candelabras and like lots of the lighting are actually electronical devices. They're not really like candles, so they will produce some power bills. And I'm sorry for that, but the Sims team gives us horrible candle candelabras and I can't size them down that good because then the flames of the, the animations always stay the same height and like size. So yeah, these are like all the freedoms that I took. Here we are in Lydia's and Kitty's room, which we see like for, I've counted it, 11 seconds. <laughs> And it took lots of freedom. For me, it's a little bit more colorful. There's a little bit more of toys there. There's lots of clutter of like clothes and whatnot. I just thought they are like a little bit still so childish and whatnot. And apparently they're really dislikable in the story. They made them a little bit more likable in the movie. But yeah, I just thought I, I kind of want to clutter it up and kind of make it look like they're real like teenagers, you know, they're not really grown women yet since they are like so silly they're, they are not really tidy and whatnot so this is why I chose the little bit more colorful bedroom here where like lots and lots of stuff is going on and in Lizzie's and Jane's um, room I just decided it would be cool to uh, you know go for a little bit more minimal mature look that apparently they also did in the in the movie which I personally like I think that's that's kind of sweet that it's all like white and blue and uh, yeah I kind of think it's a little bit more mature <laughs> I have to say that I tried my really like my best to recreate the house from the movie I've never been to Groombridge Place the original filming set um, so if you have been there maybe I totally did the bedrooms wrong <laughs> I don't know what's upstairs I haven't really figured out. I had to go by movie frame by frame and kind of figure out where which room is. And that was kind of hard because apparently they changed that up quite a lot here in this, uh, you know, in the, in the movie. But um, yeah, I, so I had some freedoms through that, but I also don't didn't have that because I was like, Ugh, yeah, what am I going to do now? Um, but yeah, I think for the time period, kind of it fits. It's definitely possible to replay that kind of Georgian era, you know, story with your Sims here. If you're interested in that, I, I personally kind of think it's a little bit more interesting maybe as a servant to live there. So hence why I did some servant quarters next to the stables. And yeah, since you don't have balls and all that kind of Pride and Prejudice gameplay, if, if you would say, maybe you, there are some mods for that. Um, but yeah, I think this is the best depiction of the house that we have in The Sims 4 for now. By the way, there are lots and lots of other Pride and Prejudice builds. And I will you know, do a little list of them. They are all on the gallery. And I have to say, everyone did like a great job on that. So I will provide you with a list to check out all the other builds as well. Because, you know, us fellow builders, we have to stick together. <laughs> And yeah, here are the floor plans of the whole house. If you want to rebuild this yourself or if you have some struggle finding where everything is. And now we move on to the panning shots so you can have a better look at everything since the sweet build version is always so quick. So yeah, here it is, 60 hours of my life. And it's beautiful. It's really, really detailed. It fits perfectly into Hanford and Bagley. It is, I think, around 600,000 simoleons if you want to download this. And it is also on a 64 by 64 lot. But yeah, uh, the interior shots. So if you have seen the movie, maybe even just recently, you will definitely, you know, remember that that's how it looks like. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I was really, really happy how everything turned out and actually how lived in it looked. When I did the, oh yeah, the kitchen is also something that was like seen for hmm, 10 minutes and it's mostly close ups. Inside there are lots of close ups sometimes in certain rooms. So it's hard to figure out where everything is in the room and you know what it actually looks like. But yeah, since I had the freedom to make like a Sims 4 version, <laughs> this is the best I could do. 
Um, but yeah, I really, really love this. This was like, it's frustrating, but it was also like, now that it's finished, I'm always so proud of my builds. I'm like, okay, this was 60 hours. Was it worth it? I guess, you know, I had fun building it. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's a really, really cute build. I really hope that you like it as well. So yeah, let's move outside and have a look at it again. This is the back of the house. And yeah, you can go by frame by frame and see that all the, you know, bridges and whatnot are all working. Um, your sims can go over them and like, you know, everything is basically usable. I play tested. It's definitely usable. Um, kind of bumped out that the chickens can go through the drying lines, drying racks. So that's apparently like, a, it's a bummer. But yeah, there's also the swing set that we see where Lizzie is like sitting in the movie doing turns and then they show the seasons going by through that which is like a very cool filming like cinematography style I think how to do depict that and yeah basically the stables is like a cool hangout spot for the cows and the chickens and lots and lots of other outdoor activity like gardening beekeeping uh, flower arranging you know all that kind of skills that are maybe something they would do or like that your sims would do and uh, yeah, I think it's uh, it was a fun build. I think it's the most detailed version of the house. And it's also just in general, if you're not into the story, it's just in general, a really, really cool a big house for lots and lots of Sims to live and, uh, you know, play in. <laughs> so yeah, four bedrooms and two or three servants rooms, um, three bathrooms. So I think there's like plenty, plenty of you know space for all of your sims and stuff to do and uh, yeah this is basically it i really really hope that you like my recreation of the pride and prejudice long burn bennett house and yeah this is basically it guys i want to thank you so so much again for watching please like and subscribe if you're into these kinds of builds and yeah let me know in the comments if you want to see any other recreation from movies tv series animes i don't know anything just let me know and uh, I will see you soon. Bye-bye.